Hey guys, this is Idori from Bricks Maven. A very good afternoon. Welcome to the new training where we'll be building a bricks section in the bricks builder. Today we will be looking at building a hero slider. Well, a hero it's a hero section with a background slider using the slider nestable elements from Bricks Builder. And as you can see it has a heading and a descriptive text on top of it, also with a call to action. And basically the background, the slider is set to fade and the text is in the middle. So this is what we'll be building today. Follow me as we build this together. So let us jump in. Let's go into the editor where we will be building the structure. And I always say in every video, and I will keep on saying it, you can always jump to the designated section that you want to watch. And this will be the section where we actually build up the block, add all the blocks to it. And we will then style, sorry, typo there, we will then style the blocks and elements, and then we'll start styling it. This will be slider, slider wrapper. Yeah. Mm. The content we need heading, base text, and a button. Let's set this to heading. I'll give it the the the, uh, the correct head immediately. Oh, this should be a text, it's a paragraph. And I'll give this also a utility class of black. By the way, it could also be white. But black is okay. Let's go with black. Let's call to action. And on the slider, we add the slider nestable. I already I always delete all the all this extra stuff. I don't need this. And let's add in the image. Every slider will contain an image. And on the slider nestable element i always remove the styling okay we will not be needing the pagination um, as for the options it's all good I remove the background so it's white so we can just start with a plain slate um as for the i think i have all the elements i need right we have a section, a container, the content, the content that will sit on top of the slider. And yeah, now we, we can start styling. I'll start from here using the Autobahn feature. So just call this hero section. And let's see what we have here. We have the slide. We can just copy this. I'll do the first one and I'll also give this a class of slide item yeah like that it should be slide wrapper and we don't need all this but hero section slide wrapper i think this can be this and as for all these i'll just give it a container class i'll call this hero section container oh let me remove all these it's not needed here I'll just add the hero section class, remove the container, remove the slider wrapper, and just add class. Okay, so everything has a class. Let me just test it. This one, oh, I have classes, has a class, has a class, has a class, has a class. Okay, okay, so now we can basically get started. But after that, let me check if I've given all the elements the right tag. There's a button. This paragraph is heading, image, figure tag, cover. Okay, let's add an image. So we have an image there just to see, you know, visual reference is there. Let's start from the hero section. So the idea here is I want my slider to stretch to the sides of the screen, right? The left, the right, the top, the bottom. So I will be absolute positioning my slider just so that it stretches to all the sides. 
and the content will have the normal flow of the page the uh, slide the section itself I will give it a rem value a height rem value but we need to change the value also on mobile but I'll be using uh, locally scoped variables to determine the height so I have two heights for desktop and for mobile why because um, the section and the image will have the same height and they also have the same height on mobile landscape so if I just have one place where I can just change those two tweak those two values it will be good and the reason why we're setting the height is because if I set the slider to position absolute it will only get the section will only get the height of the content and then it will not make sense because it has to have the height of the slider so let's get started so I'll set this to position relative here as you can see and we need to give this a height but I will do that first let me just clear the scope variables this is a desktop height I'll do 86 RAM this will be mobile height this is 64 RAM okay so I'll copy this put it here, press enter to add that height. So now we have a height of uh, 860 pixels for our section, right? As for our container, our container will set this to 100% height so that it fills the whole uh, section height 100%. And then we will then make sure that our content is styled correctly so okay we have a flex uh, vertical column yes see here center I also center it we need a row gap right let me take this text and let's fill in the text okay this is the same call to action okay um, I would like to make the heading bigger so i will do it like this um, text to sell times three well that's too much 1.5 okay that's good let me go back to the content again and i'm going to center the typography so that's also centered on the parents so all the children will be centered uh, because if you guys have noticed if you center sometimes if you center if you use the the align item center it will it will align yes it will align the um, it will set the items on the center but when it comes to like typography sometimes it um, it, it will be still left aligned like a mobile or something I don't know it's like you just saw with the heading it was left aligned so I always set the typography also to center here okay so we have this so the next thing I want to do is, uh, let me see where's my container, okay, my container is there. I will also center the items in the middle, right? Okay, so now it might not be looking the way that you, we want it to look. It's not looking like this, right? But because our slider is still there and I want to take our, our slider out of the flow of the content, and we do that by setting this to position absolute. And we make sure that it goes to all the sides. Just refresh the page, yes. And I would like to also bring our content on top, right? That's what we want. So I'll just set this to like two. And I just remember that I forgot something. I forgot the overlay. So let's create that this overlay overlay will sit on top of the slider and this also needs a class here section overlay and the overlay I will just be um, would also be set to position absolute also spanning to all sides and I will then also go to my CSS and add a line near background I could also do it here on the gradient overlay and add our colors but I want to just, um, I want to write that out. 
I might also use a locally scoped variables. I could use it so that I could put all the CSS like on the section like here. And you can just come here and make your changes. So maybe, maybe we should do that. So we'll say, um, uh, wait, this will be uh, overlay uh, col uh, color, uh, overlay color alpha. So you could say uh, neutral tra trans using all um, automatic CSS variables. So I'll just, and this will be beta, beta, however way you pronounce it. And this will also be neutral trans. So the reason I'm doing this is if you want a um, gradient that's not one color, or if you want it to like uh, go from like 80% to 40% or the other way around, you are free to do this, right? Okay, so let's take this color, uh, sorry, variable that we created, go to the overlay, to our root, say background, background, wow, okay, type today again, line here, gradient, gradient, and then we can then add our var, like this, and actually do it again, here, and then we basically have our variable in it, right? Let me just lock that. So I could say uh, be this. So we have two, we have the two uh, two colors in, right? So to give you an example, let me go back. So color, overlay, color, beta. Okay, let's go back to our overlay. I, okay, this thing go well. Okay, so there it is. And if you want to see the colors change, for example, look, if I set this to like 60, see it changed, 40, it changed. So I can just make my colors here on the fly. I don't need to go to my overlay and be making changes. So I can do everything from here. So uh, 60 will be good. I'll put this in with a 90. So it's, and then we want to give this a also give it a z index of one because i want it to sit on top of the image and then if i go back to my uh, content let me see we'll put it to two and, and let me give this a color of white yes now you see it sits on top and also the width of uh, l and i will have to center this also so now you see it's already coming alive, right? What we, what we want. So now let's focus on the slider. So I go to my nested slider options and I say I, the type that I want is fade, that's one. I, on my height, let's see um, what for kind of height. I could also um, do the same thing here what I did so I can go back to so I can give it the same height as my section come here I've not even tried let me see does it even accept oh yes there you go see so we have the same height here and on mobile landscape I can change that too so we have the same height here and the speed well first of all I want it to be an autoplay that's very important and I'll set this to like 5,000 and I want it to rewind that's all you need to do speed into false uh, I think it's good let's head over to our image and let's set this to did I style it on the no I didn't I styled it on the ID so this has to go and this has to set to cover okay Let's go to our styles and let's say this is, uh, let's give this the same desktop height, right? And the width should just be 100%. So now it's starting to look the way that we want it, right? Okay, so now let's jump over to more, uh, uh, the tablet portrait. It's looking good. The mobile landscape is looking good. It's also looking good. But on mobile, I find it too high. So 
we're going to make our changes. So we go to our hero section. I paste in the variable, but and then I set this to mo this mobile height. See, so it's shorter now. Okay, so now all I need to do is set it on my image and on my overlay. It's not necessary on my, um, wait, I didn't, var mobile height, yes. I have to set it on my slider. Where is it, where is it? Slider nested, options. Okay, so now we're good, right? So I set it on three places. So this is something I'll need to do once, so I can always come to my uh, hero section. Let me also just add like CSS here, right? So you know CSS, and here you can just change the values. So if you want this to be taller, it will affect everything, right? If you want it to be like, let me see if I set this to 100% on mobile, what happens? It messes up. But it has to be 100, um, let's see, 100 VH or 90 VH. Yeah. See, so you can just, we can make all the changes from this spot, right? But for now, I just want it to be, fit the screen. It should go back to 86. So 860 pixels and 640 pixels. So, as you can see, it's all set, right? Okay, so now let's duplicate the slides and add uh, more images to it. Or is this slide two, slide three, slide four. Let's add images. This one and this one. And let's keep it at three. Because the other the order the quality of the other images are quite low, so could have added more, but I just want it to look sharp. Okay, so let me check this out on the front page and see how it's working. So let's wait. There we go. And we're basically done. Let me just let's check out the response, how it works. See? Boom. And it's quite um Okay, I did it I did it very quickly and I actually hope that it was very clear, especially especially the locally scoped val um, variables. Obviously, I could have had the if if you're thinking like, okay, why did you do it this way, right? If you still don't understand why we use the locally scoped variables, it's just because if I set this pixel value on the section, on the image, on the uh, on the slider, what would happen is. If I wanted to change it on the desktop, I have to go to three places to change it. And if I want to change it on mobile, I would have to go to three places to change it. So having the values here, it's, if I just need to change it once, and it will be automatically um, passed through, passed to the section. And, you know, also, well, also this, right? So I could say instead of uh, uh, no trans, I could have said transparent, right? Now it's transparent. So you can just make your changes here and to affect your uh, design. So yeah, that's basically it. This was a quick one and one of the shorter videos that I've made. I hope this was educational. Hope you liked it. If I missed anything, if I didn't, if I could, if I could do anything differently, let me know. Oh, and you also have the I forgot to say, on your slider, you can also add your you can add your arrows pagination and whatever you like right but i just chose to keep it real clean anyways thank you for watching again and i'll see you in the next oh like share subscribe and i want to see your comments what do you think let me know have a nice day bye bye